we know that you started your practice in trial court in Trivandrum. That was uh, more than half a century back. Uh, I got enrolled uh, in the High Court of Kerala in 1956 and uh, for a an year and a half I was practicing with a senior advocate in Trivandrum. This is the place where I am born and brought up and the district court happened to be just next door to my house. I used to be living in a different house uh, in Vanchiur where the courts are located. So that was in uh, 1956. I continued that practice for uh, an year and a half and it was in 1958 I left for uh, Aligarh uh, Muslim University where I got a teaching assistantship uh, which was uh, the advice of my professor in uh, Trivandrum, Dr. A.T. Marcos. So his friend was the dean of the Aligarh Muslim University Law Faculty, Professor Hafizur Rahman. And uh, they gave me a small uh, salary or a scholarship, you may say. And I did my LLM along with the teaching assistantship in Aligarh University right from 1959. So that was the start of my academic career and shifting this uh, the advice of uh, my professor Dr. Marcos that I would make a good career in uh, the academic field rather than in the practicing profession. This was uh, my mother was very reluctant to leave me at that time because I am the only uh, son. Uh, of course I had my younger brother who died later. So she was very reluctant and would have liked me to continue in Trivandrum but I decided to take it up and persuaded her and uh, went to Aligarh and uh, continued in Aligarh till 1965 uh, when I got appointed to the Delhi University Law Faculty. But there was no turning back from the academic career ever since I started it in 59. And you know last year I completed 50 years of teaching uh, which was celebrated by the Indian Society of uh, Law Firms uh, where they gave an award of a lakh of rupees and instituted an award in my name. They call it the Professor N. R. Madhav Menon Best Law Teacher Award. So the second year it was awarded recently to a Bangladesh law professor, Professor Misanur Rahman. Now this will be continued year after year. So. Throwing back memories 50 years uh, uh, earlier, I remember that uh, the time was quite different, practice was quite different. I started off in the criminal side, which I liked of course, had some experience in conducting cases uh, along with my senior, in some cases minor matters, he used to advise me to go uh, for the lower courts. But that was a period in which uh, uh, not much payment was there. Whatever was the, the senior was giving, that was what uh, I used to get. So in fact, to make some extra money, I used to uh, participate in some radio programs, in the All India Radio. Uh, you know, some small skits, they used to assign some roles and at that time for an half an hour program they used to give 50 rupees so which was big money also, yes so you're an actor. <laughs> not an actor it's a radio program so only voice is heard but uh, you may say that uh, in a sense i took some roles uh, which they assigned not so much for the love of acting but to make some extra money to meet both ends meet that's all otherwise you know I lost my father at the age of two years and uh, my mother brought me up and there was no proper counselling as to what career I should be taking etc. But uh, my mother did not uh, want me to go away from Trivandrum. Were you and, a first generation lawyer? No, I am, uh, well, with my family I am the first lawyer but I have my uncle who was practicing. Uh, my cousin brother who was also practicing but not in uh, Trivandrum. They were practicing in Chartalai. That is our original uh, home. 
but uh, the practice at that time was not that remunerative. People used to say that at least for five to ten years you have to struggle in the profession to be able to get uh, make money for a living. So you have to have some other activity along with practice unless your family is able to support you for four or five years. That was not my situation. So I necessarily had to, I used to teach in a tutorial college also. So that was for uh, higher secondary students. Uh, so that brought some money, the radio brought some money and so they... If the, if the monetary side of a practice was taken care of, would we have lost Madhav Menon as the academic? Well, uh, not perhaps so because um, uh, I loved uh, teaching also, you know, as I told you in the tutorial college, though I was not teaching law, I was teaching English and mathematics. Uh, so therefore, I loved teaching as well. So when this advice from my professor came, I preferred that profession to the practice of law. Well, nobody knows as to how, uh, you know, your fate will shape you up and uh, once I went to North and started teaching in Aligarh University uh, where I became, uh, you know, a lot of things, a president of the Malayali Association, uh, the president, uh, the, the captain of the uh, Aligarh Muslim University Riding Club and the warden of uh, Sir Sayyid Hall, a hostel of uh, Aligarh University. So these multiple responsibilities at a very young age, uh, I was there hardly 22 at that time. So all this uh, uh, made me perhaps uh, learn the different facets of life. And the career was also at that time, the salary was only 650 rupees. I used to save some money and send to my mother here. So it was all right, it went off well. Uh, uh, only thing is that in 1965 there was an episode in Aligarh where the vice chancellor was assaulted uh, by some students of the Aligarh University. Some of them happened to be my uh, hostel uh, inmates. So that uh, resulted in a, a you know police uh, uh, taking away some of my students from my hostel. I happened to be a witness for, against them. So it was a, a, a sad incident uh, which persuaded me to look for a change. And luckily for me, the offer from Delhi University came. That's how I moved after five, six years in Aligarh to Delhi. And uh, Delhi, of course, was at that time trying to shape uh, or sort of reform the then system of legal education under a very distinguished professor, P.K. Tripathi. And that gave me an opportunity to experiment uh, with different styles of teaching. Delhi was at that time introducing what is called the case method of law study with some Ford Foundation assistance. I happened to be sponsored uh, for a year-long pro program in uh, Columbia University Law School in USA under this Ford Exchange program. And that was a very pleasant time. I was uh, giving some seminars, attending some lectures of some distinguished people and trying to learn how law is being taught in the American setting. There was, I was not pursuing any degree or anything. I was a visiting scholar under the Ford program. I traveled widely in many law schools uh, across America, interacted with many professors, uh, that's where I observed some aspects of clinical law teaching, where the skills are being taught. So at the end of that year, when I returned to Delhi, I had initiated for the first time what is called the Legal Aid Clinic. Uh, that was way back in 1969. So within 10 years, I became a sort of a clinical law teacher, you may say, and had the experience of taking my students to the Tihar jail, to the police stations and uh, you know the, the law teaching and law learning became uh, more uh, active and uh, more participatory and uh, 
more in social context rather than mere classroom based lecturing uh, well the legal aid clinic uh, experience at that time brought me i mean got me appointed as a member of the government of india appointed uh, legal aid committee expert committee on legal aid and justice v r krishnayar was the chairman of that committee so from the academic side i was appointed that gave me an opening to impress upon my colleagues in the academic world as to how the association of students with legal aid would enable them to understand legal problems in context and to learn the skills of advocacy and that was a sort of a turning point i should say uh, in law teaching both in delhi as well as in few other places i travel widely with justice krishnayar and justice bhagavati uh, canvassing for lok adalats which was then beginning under justice bhagavati's uh, i continued to be a member of the expert committee on legal aid and a committee for implementing legal aid schemes for almost uh, a de- two decades